unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. James Helder, IFL TV, MTK Global. With me, I've got former WBO middleweight champion, none other than Liam Smith. How are you, champ? Good, James. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. We're here today at the, the fights for Amir Khan, Phil Greco. Good undercard, good win for Natasha Jonas as well from your team. Yeah, All good. good win. Yeah, good win. First title. Onto the next one. Yeah, some, some talent, Natasha Jonas, isn't she? Yeah, she's so very talented, obviously. You know, bringing women boxing high on everyone's, everyone's lips, you know what I mean? So, she's a... Um, She's good to watch, especially when you know you enjoy enjoy your boxing. You know she's got a lovely style, and it's good to see her now in title fight where she can showcase that. Good range of shots long, as yeah, well. Definitely. Yeah. Someone told me she was better with a football than you are, Beef. Can you probably can is, you yeah. comment on that? Yeah, it's probably is. She's got football in her family as well, so that's right. Sister's a pro footballer, so she's sport Billy. All boxers love a bit of football and would like to try their hand at that, and all footballers seem to to want to be boxers' natural sort of thing in sport. Yeah, it's just a crossover sport, like obviously. Every footballer probably wishes they can fight. Yeah. Every fighter wishes they can play football, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what's going on with yourself. You're going out May the 12th to challenge Saddam Ali for the world title. Chance for you to get yourself back into where you believe you should be, top of the world scene. Can you sort of tell me what, what's been going on, where you're at mentally, where I've been? Just um, in town, coming to like the the nitty gritty bit, you know, the, the just three weeks a day, so got a good solid two weeks sparring, I've got some good sparring over and um, you know, it's, the, it's the exciting part now, it's been into the, the final few weeks obviously after these fights now, you've got Bellew Hay next week um, and then well in two weeks then, you know, it's myself so you know, the, it'll fly rounds and it's one I can't wait for. Such a big fight for yourself, a chance to become a two-time world champion and really make history for yourself and your family. How do you mentally prepare for that? How do you sort of get get yourself in that group? The, you know what, Gene, the same way I said with the British title stuff, then the world title, all this, you know, someone said to me, you'd be the first, maybe the first guy to be a two-time world champion or something like that. And all this will be great after it. Keep telling me what I'm, keep telling me or history we're making or things like that. But before and it's not really about that for me, it's about becoming a two time world champion and getting back what I lost and I mean I'm in a good position now and I've got a very, very good chance to do that with Saddam Ali and it'll be nice to go and beat a world champion and you know, beat a champion in his backyard. Now, I know you've been kept awake at night dreaming of El Bifo versus Cotto. I know that was a fight that you really wanted. Does it please you that you're getting a chance to win a world title against the man who beat Cotto in, in what was his final swan song? In hindsight, yeah, because I probably thought I'd ne I was never going to get the Cotto fight. If he won, he was probably going to retire anyway. So, you know, I'd have won a vacant title and then it's probably got to stick for it again. So, I'm happy I'm going into this fight as an underdog. You know, better underdog, people that take picks of Amali to beat me, he's champion. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm confident I can, uh, I can go there and do, do a very, very good job on Amali. Now, we, we know we've got such a knowledgeable boxing fan base in this country. Most people will be aware of Saddam Ali, but for those who, who may not have seen him box, what can we expect stylistically from someone like Saddam Ali? He's very, very fluent, very slick, very... Um, I'm very relaxed, good boxer, not really forced, but very fast, yeah, good feet. And, you know, talented fighter, Olympian, went to the Olympics, obviously he's only lost to Jesse Vargas, and he was doing very well in that fight before he was stopped later on, so yeah, it's one that people, like I said, you know what, he's probably a tougher fight than Cotto, and that sounds crazy, but, you know, the Cotto of now, Stam Ali is probably a tougher test and I genuinely mean that and you'll know I mean that by you know the, the lean set that turns up May 12th. Very good amateur pedigree Saddam Ali as well for those people that know about him. He's been around for Yeah he has years. he's, he's been touted for big things. And, him, has he, like? No, no, he's been touted for big things. He's um, obviously he's an Olympian, you don't get many bad fights he's got the Olympics, so he's um, he's proved himself now he's world champion and obviously he can relax now and let us box and do the talk and right, you know, all the pressure's off now. You, you have a lot of pressure on the Olympians any time over to win a world title. So he's won his world title now, so he, 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 I'm expecting a better Ali again. 
you know, he's championed that and brought him on another level and I'm expecting a very, very good, good to that Larry. Now, the news, the news that, the news that broke, obviously, is going in. Do you want to get involved? Do you want to carry on? So I come in to see Callum, not me. Um, the news that obviously broke with Sol Alvarez, you, you had the pleasure of sharing the ring to come in and unfortunately losing your title on that night. What are your thoughts on the whole situation of the I've said, I've said, you know, I, if I'm proven wrong, then I'll apologise. But I don't believe it. I'm, I'm you know, I, I believe he's cheated. I believe he's, a, you know, he's failed us. He's failed us. He's, he's been caught. Whatever else, yeah. Whatever else he's been, he's been done. Whether being he got to a test in Mexico and he never expected it, I don't know. But whether he whether he takes this stuff and then does something else to mask it and cover it, and it hasn't quite worked properly, or he's been caught with the last bit in his system, I don't know the full ins and outs. But I don't buy the meat situation. I firmly believe he's cheated to enhance his body, to enhance his chances of beating Golovkin. Tarnished, something like this tarnished his reputation in legacy yeah, in your yeah, opinion. Lost all his, like, yeah, it tarnished all his achievements in my eyes. Eh? There'll be a lot of people who will not change their tune on him now. Yeah, a lot of people will be finished with him and finished with him for good. Now, you tweeted out quite tongue in cheek, but I know there'll be a little bit of you that maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe believes in, in what, what you said, in the fact that he could have possibly have been under the influence of that when he boxed Yeah, he could have, but, you know, like, I kind of, again, so, social media is a big thing, you take a lot of stick for some things you say, some things you do, but this is a good chat to me. In hindsight, my, my fight with him, I pictured kind of, like, Cotto, Margarito, like, with him coming back to 154, I thought it would hurt him. You know, I thought the weight would hurt him massively, and I thought, I knew how good a fighter he was, I knew he was a better fighter than me, but that doesn't always work in boxing. So, in, in, from my point of view, I knew I was tough. I knew I was fit, I knew I was strong. So, I, I thought to myself, you know, if I'm still there, and if he, if, if, if he doesn't budge me by, you know, round six, and I'm still keeping the pressure up, and then, I thought he will be that dead at the weight that he will tire and he will, you know. I thought I'll stop him down, down instead. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in. Mate. How are you? Yeah, you're, yeah, more, right, you're more than welcome so, in any time, mate. No, no problem with you, champ. No problem with him. He's alright. Wouldn't like a left hook off him. I wouldn't like a right hook off him. Yeah. So I just thought to myself, you know, if he's fucked up the weight, I'll maybe stop him late, and that was. You know, I take stick for saying that, but that was what I, what, what I thought all the way through. I thought the weight would kill him, and um, and, and I get to him late on. But you know, obviously, whether he was on there because he, he didn't tire. But after the fight, I looked at that as in, I looked at it just the way the fight pans out. The timing of it was perfect for him. You know, after round six, I was um, I was still there, and I thought, right, so I stood off my stool and thought, right, he hasn't budged me. And he hadn't hurt me by this point, he genuinely hadn't. And he, I thought, you know, from his point of view, he might have been thinking, right, fuck's sake, I've hit, I've hit him with everything, he had six rounds, and he's still, he's still here, he's still coming. But then in round seven, he, he, he does get his breakthrough, and right, so then, that's it now. He relaxes, totally relaxes, and kind of goes into sparring mode, I know I can hurt him now, whereas I think, fuck's sake, I was already... You know, five, six rounds down anyway. Now I'm another two points down. So it was, um, it was just the moments in fights. I thought, a little bit like the same. I, I, I put it down the same as first crawl of Linares fight. Linares was finding it tough, the, 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 the pace, and then wobbled crawl with the right, and then just re totally relaxed. New kind of the fight was, he was ahead. And, I thought, oh, what, what happened with Canelo? But you know, now it's come out, he's cheated. Was he cheating then? I watched a very, very good interview with Victor Conti about Shane Mosley. And he um, kind of like explaining the, the things of it and stuff like that. And, you know, he said the enhancing, like the, the performance enhancing you get out of it is you recover quicker and all stuff like that. And you win the championship rounds. and. It makes sense, man, with some people. 
Yeah. Wish you the best of luck for May the 12th. I hope you're going to go out there and be victorious. You do know how much boxing is on May the 12th as yeah, well. I do, yeah. Tell people why they should watch your fight other than some of the other fights that are on that night, mate. Oh, easy. Easy. that was something there. See, that's why you should watch mine. Lights out. <laughs> yeah, that's why you should watch mine. <laughs> no, yeah. 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 no, just watch mine. Obviously, be good to see me become two time world champion in you know, foreign soil. Best of luck, then. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Three rounds, three minutes, three fights. Unbeaten fighters and major performance. I can't tell you how excited I am about this.